second. The governor, the governor, the governor devil lives there. So wow. you see the contrast. One person left here with about 20 windows. Place well ventilated. And right underneath the governor's apartment was a male dungeon where a thousand people were squeezed in with tiny holes for light. And so this was a sitting room. This is a bedroom. So this is what you call this master's bedroom? Sick people. Master's here? Master bedroom? Is, is, is that where you get it from? Master bedroom? Mm -hmm. The governor master lived there. You know, the other time, another brother was telling me something about the master bedroom. Yes. That uh, at times on the plantation farms, Yes. the slave master's bedroom there are windows that point to the cabins where maybe the master could see and even watch his property and all that. So it also had the name the master bedroom. Yeah. So the governor's bedroom is right here. So you see that there's a big contrast, the dungeons and where the governor lives. So as I mentioned, on 19th March, 1877, the governor's bedroom and sitting room was moved from Cape Coast to Accra. So now the British governor lived in another castle in Accra called the Christian Spoke Castle. Mm. Mm. But initially the Christian Spoke Castle was built by the Danes of Denmark. But with time, the Danes could not match the competition from the English. See, it's interesting. When you look at the history behind the fort and castles along the coast of Ghana, you realize that the British came late. Now they have to fight either the Portuguese or the Dutch to take their possessions from them. So with time, the British had occupied all the fortune castles in Ghana, with the exception of Elmina Castle and Christiansburg Castle. So Elmina Castle was, the Dutch were there, the Danish were there. So it's basically like the British, the Dutch, and the Danes. The British now owns about 90% of the coast. So the others were compelled to sell so that the Dutch had to sell Elmina Castle to the English, the Danes had to do similar. So with time, the English occupied all the fortune castles along the coast. So you can imagine that brought a lot of wealth to England. And why are they still, why are they struggling now? Well, I don't know if they're struggling. I think it's France struggling. It's, but it's the same situation. You, you steal all of these riches and your country is still struggling. So imagine if they couldn't get access to this wealth of, uh, Again, yeah. of resources in Africa. Exactly, because if Their civilization would have ended exactly. th thousands of years ago. Exactly. So you could imagine if, if colonization in Africa was still direct, you could imagine how rich. And see, as I said, nothing has actually changed over the years because still money is pumped to England, to France, to Belgium from we not owning our resources. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you another secret. See, the education system here is still colonial where you are still taught to be a worker, mm. right? Mm. To be a worker, like... And a consumer versus uh, industrializing and exactly. producing. You don't produce anything, you don't invent anything from yourself. So that is how the educational system is. So now, if you have a natural resources, and apart from that also, there are loans we take that come with conditions. So it's just like the economics is actually structured to cripple us. So now, okay, Ghana, our oil is in the ocean. It's like, it's deep. So now, we have oil. Okay, my friend, drill your oil, get your oil, and let me see. Can you get your oil? No, I can't get my oil. So we still go to them. My friend, I have oil. I want to get the oil, but I can't get it. So now he now tells you, okay, I know you don't have the capital. You don't have the machinery. Okay, so my friend, this is the times. I'm going to drill your oil for you for this number of years. I'm going to get more. So for example, Ghana received less than 30% of the oil revenue. So still now, a bunch of uh, the money 
from our resources is going to them still. Yeah. So who owns the, the actual refinery, the, the industry, uh, equipment? And another thing also, yeah. we don't, it's now that things are beginning to change a little bit. We don't have refineries in Africa. So listen to this part. Nigeria. If you have refinery in Africa, it is bad for the West. Because so, now you have your crude oil. Now you refine your own petroleum product. So what about the big refinery in Nigeria? Yeah, so now, that's what I'm saying so now. Is, is that, that going to be bad news for them? Definitely, that's, a, that's another blow. No. Because like an African is building a refinery. Yeah. So now to say that we are not, we are not, now perhaps if we were exporting about 80% of our crude, now we're not going to export 80% to you. It's decreasing. So I think this will be a lesson to all of us that we can start our own thing. Yes. yes. We don't yes. have to. So it's basically like yes. you sell you sell your, your raw crude for them for like a hundred dollars. They turn them into petroleum products and, and they sell, sell it, it to you at a bigger price. Mm -hmm. And then you have, so that's how you stay at a disadvantage. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Also, because at times we need loans for certain things. When we get a loan from the World Bank, from IMF and all that, it comes with certain conditions that prevent you from establishing your, your plans, that prevent you from establishing something core you need. So at the end of the day, it's basically like, when you take the loan, at the long run, you see the short term, it benefits you, but at the long run, it goes back to them. And you still remain poor, you they still remain up there. So that's economics, yeah. Um, the descendants of the people who once were, what do you think, or maybe you have read somewhere, would be the answer for us to change that mentality between the natives who are here and those who are abroad? Okay. So first of all, what I would say is, the first step is awareness. If you are a human being and you are not aware of your situation, then you don't make changes. Right? Mm -hmm. So now the first step is we have to create the awareness. What we fall short as Africans home and Africans at the diaspora. So the first thing is we uniting together. Mm -hmm. Because I know that through the transatlantic slave trade, I know that our brothers and sisters at the, at the diaspora are not only athletes. They are not only rappers. I know there are intellectuals. There are inventors. We have the natural resources in Africa. So if Africans home and Africans at the diaspora unite, we come together, we know what we fall short, we settle that, we unite our minds and our resources together, we give brothers and sisters into our economy, we, we encourage them to enter into the African economy, invest in what they have, invest their minds, invest their monies. Mm -hmm. With that, we change the mindset. If that, with that, you know, we become aware that things that our mindsets were changed, we try to stop it. We now should have Africa's interest and Africans' interest first. So the first step is let's build the awareness, let's come together, and let's change things that does not benefit us. And also, as African people, we need unity. Okay. Unity is strength. Mm -hmm. So that's another, in, that's another important thing we need. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, I know of, of the Black Panthers. The Black Panther in the U.S. was strong. Mm -hmm. But what happened? Okay. Infiltration. Infiltration. Disorganized them, disunited them. Divide and conquer. Exactly. Yeah. The same technique. Exactly. Yeah. Divide them and conquer them. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that is what we need as a people. Yeah. So that is what Ghana have started, bringing Africans home. You know, so with time, when everybody comes home, because when you come home, you, you take a different mindset back. Because, you know, trust me, they tell you a lot of lies and misconception there. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So here, you know the reality on the ground. Mm -hmm. You tell the others mm -hmm. what happened. Mindset will now change. Then we'll do things that will benefit Africans and Africa. Mm -hmm. Because I feel that if there is an EU, right, EU that is for the benefit of white people and Europeans, mm -hmm. what's stopping Africans to have an African unity thing? Mm -hmm. So that we make plans, we make, we bring certain programs that would develop the lives of Africans everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that is what I feel we should do as a people. Do you think fear, based on what you taught us, 
the, 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 the sort of uh, technique that was developed, Develop. do you think that had a, a genetic impact, a, yes, a, a psych, some sort of yes, other exactly. impact on future generations? Exactly. Fear exactly. is what's causing exactly. this lack of change? Exactly. Okay. Fear is also part, because now, you see, like currently, like what, what's happening in, in, in Ukraine and like Russia and Ukraine? Because one, one will feel that he has all the weapons, or he he has the advantage over you. That now, when he tries to tell you something, when he tries to manipulate you, and you don't want to give in, now he uses force on you to create fear. Exactly, like what happened here. The British brought their guns. When the Ashantis were becoming a problem, these Europeans manufactured bigger guns and better guns to fight the Ashantis. So with the Ashantis being defeated, with those bigger guns, there is fear to that... Get, to get submission. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's another thing. So, so, so why do you think that now nations will spend a lot of budget in buying and loops, defense, and defense, defense. the Americans, the Russians, the North Koreans, the Chinese will spend a lot of money on weapons and ammunition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because the more weapons and ammunition you have, the more you are feared. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I hope one day we just we put a bubble over the African continent and let them just wipe each other out. Exactly, so <laughs> it's like that. So yes, fear, yes. Fear, the emotional fear, the trauma. So, okay, I yeah. So our system of revolution should not be based on, you know, using weapons, but uniting, becoming aware of our situation, creating opportunities for ourselves, developing and changing our lives as African people, or people of African descent. So that is what our revolution should get towards. Yeah. 20 numbers, family. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the